Who would have thought? Mast for prostate health. Masterone for prostate health. Ah, there you go. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Yeah, so near to the sperm, uh, in the general anatomic region, we have the prostate. And uh, prostate cancer patients, um, actually this study was kind of prompted by the DAST survey, uh, Dutasteride Active Surveillance Survey, mm -hmm. um, or study. And there's one going on now called the MAST survey, which is using metformin in a similar way, I think three years. So who would have thought MAST for prostate health? Masterone for prostate health. Ah, there you go. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, but uh, no, it's definitely a reasonable addition in a lot of cancer diagnoses with prostate cancer. Um, you think about uh, anti-androgen effects classically. You think about inhibiting both the gonadal um, steroid synthesis. You think about blocking the androgen receptor. You think about inhibiting adrenal steroidogenesis. But um, inhibiting cell turnover at the end of the day, um, mTOR is an oncogene. Yeah, and it's interesting because it, you know it has this use in renal cell carcinoma. You know, very commonly. I'm not sure if there's a indication for that, but it's mm -hmm. very commonly given. Yep. In extended survival, you know, there's some hyper responders that are going to live a very long time, much longer than they would have mm -hmm. otherwise. Um, and the renal cancers tend to be kind of you know, encapsulated or not terribly aggressive. Uh, same thing with the prostate cancer, right? That's kind of a similar characteristic. Yep. So um, it it wasn't a home run. It didn't reverse prostate cancer. It didn't cure the prostate cancer, but it did have a potentially favorable impact on the immune system. So uh, T cells uh, were not as exhausted as they were in the placebo group. So, uh, you know, it was a potential favorable signal. Uh, and this was with, you know, once weekly dosing at very, very low doses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, reassuringly there, there certainly wasn't evidence of immune impairment, yeah. which is what you would be concerned for. Yeah, it is a little counterintuitive. And we were looking into this uh, as extensively as we could, looking into the potential immunosuppressive side effects of rapamycin, because you think organ rejection drug, you're concerned for pneumonias and uh, various other infections and getting sepsis easily. And it doesn't really appear to be the case perhaps partly because it's immunomodulatory effect. And even just the effect itself on DNA, is, that is a significant contributor to a well-functioning immune system. Yeah. And when we're looking at other public health problems, you know, we talked about sort of hypertension, congestive heart failure, and we're looking at fertility, again, another very common issue. What about mental health? Everybody's talking about ketamine now and ketamine infusions, but mm -hmm. nobody's talking about ketamine plus rapamycin, even though yeah. there is a, I don't know where this idea came from, but there's a study looking at exactly this. Yeah, one of my patients actually sent this to me and it was uh, actually a very well, um, I guess, well-published study. I'm glad they published it mm -hmm. because their hypothesis was that um, rapamycin before ketamine could alter the effects to where it would not be as effective. Where they found the opposite, they found that it increased the duration of its antidepressant anxiety. It, it, its mental health benefits of the ketamine-assisted therapy um, lasted significantly longer. Yeah, which is interesting. And I know they talked about mTORC1, mTORC2, and, and blocking those specifically. Uh, we're going to sort of dampen or eliminate that beneficial effect of the ketamine. Yep. I don't know if they were thinking of, because I'm just speculating here, in BDNF as a growth factor, and then that yeah. growth factor acting on the mTOR pathway. Like they could be totally out in left field. But, um, you know, props to them for publishing their you know, hypothesis that was, or publishing the finding that was counter to their hypothesis. Um, and then also having a placebo group there, because we know in antidepressant studies, the placebo yeah. group is incredibly, uh, or that effect is incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, their protocol was rapamycin, six migs or placebo two hours before ketamine infusion. Mm -hmm.